All right, so let's talk about Biogen version 9 because I now have a release date in mind, the 10th of December. Don't you hate it when people are announcing release dates and they leave it to like the end of the trailer or the article or the video or whatever to tell you what the actual date is? 10th of December, write it down. Okay, but I should say that's slightly subject to change depending on if I'm suddenly unable to work on like a certain day. Sometimes I suffer with a few like medical issues that can prop up every now and again. So if you keep an eye on my social media, then I will let you know if anything changes. But in this video, I thought we'll take a look at some of the extra things that I've been working on. If you are following me on Twitter, you might have already seen seen some of the stuff about this but just to get you excited and keep you updated I'm going to show you what new things have been coming to Biogen. So first of all some days ago I finally got working on the mesh volume effect proof case. So these are for presets intended to fill space inside of a mesh volume so if you've got a piece of machinery and like you've got some panels missing what do you see inside that machinery. Now I've got some really cool demos which I'm going to show you in a little bit but this is the initial test I did so basically if you have a cube which represents your volume you click on it you choose your preset in Biogen you click apply and then it basically fills that volume. What it does is it takes the faces it insets them by the normal direction direction and then it scatters the objects around to create what looks like an internal shape. There is also the option for boolean intersection trimming for details that escape the volume but that is very performance intensive. And if you're wondering what we're looking at here, I thought it would be a nice idea if I could create these image devlogs, which I could post on my social medias. So again, if you're following me on Twitter, then you will see some of these pop up. So it's like a direct news feed of the updates coming straight to you. So remember to follow me. So parametric and structural sections have been added in anticipation for future development. So under the mesh effects section, there's parametric and structural. Parametric will eventually replace all modifier styles, removing dependency on the modifier stack and replacing effects with geometry nodes versions. Structural will add a new category of effects, which generates something from nothing e.g. wires, branches, roots, organic masses, um, cables, and stuff like that. Now these two sections might not make it into version 9. That's because they're taking a little while longer to make. Also, not all of the nodes are available for me to completely replicate all of the original modifier styles. I have been doing a lot of structural experiments, but basically I don't think it'll be substantial enough to put in version 9. Also, a button has been added in the different content browsers to allow people to access the Biogen webpage. So it's a quick place where you can grab new content packs when they're available. I've added a new glass shards template preset. So if you want to quickly click to add add glass shards around a surface or paint them on, then you can do that. There's a new option to make imported content collections unique or just use a pre-imported collection. So basically for efficiency's sake, if you're importing surface effects using Biogen, the mesh content they're using will come imported in the form of a collection, which is hidden. You can have it so if you're importing the same effect onto multiple objects, they can use the same collection, which saves space in your blend file. Or you can have the option now to duplicate the collection for each one. So if you want to make modifications and changes to the look of each effect in terms of the mesh content, then you can do that. So you can have like different types of mesh content applied to each of those effects. A convenience button has been added for making vertex groups from the edit mode selection. Someone asked for this in the YouTube comments, so I added it. Different content packs can now be accessed simultaneously separated by category. Biogen will automatically detect whether the content pack contains presets for a category and add it to each list. So Biogen is moving to a content pack system. Some of these content packs may or may not have content for each of the different effect categories in the add-on. So Biogen will automatically look at those content packs, detect whether it has content for that category, and then display it in the list. So we just have a quick little demonstration here that you can see the add-on is selected under the displacement section, whereas the base content pack is selected under surface effects. Okay, so what else? Mesh volume effect import test. So after doing the proof case for the mesh volume effects, I started testing it and you can see some of those demonstrations here. So I took a sphere and I duplicated it to give us the volume object, removed some faces from the outer one and then applied the effect to the inner one. And you can see here how we've got this cool sci-fi internal effect going. This is the same effect applied to both just with a slightly modified material and modified values in the geometry nodes. The volume effects has now been given their own content browser in the add-on. There's control in the nodes for doing the normal offset as well as the scale offset. I've added a new sticks and stones preset to the surface effects and also improved how the random rotation works in all of the geometry nodes. Content browsers were added for the parametric and structural versions but as I said they probably won't make it into version 9. Normal offsets have also been added to the surface effects not just the volume effects and this here on the right is what the add-on looks like with the surface effect, mesh displacement and volume browsers open at the same time. Okay so here's the fun stuff. Now I have the volume effect system working. I've been working on different artistic presets for what to add. So this one on the left is basically the same as the original proof case just applied to this character model. But here are two more artistic tests I've been working on. So these will be presets in the base version. I quite like this weave one here on the right because it looks pretty cool. Like this guy has a synthetic interior. So I'm quite happy with how the progress for this has gone. So why don't we take a quick look inside of Blender. So let me apply the subdivision to this cube object here. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this, scale one down. Let's remove a bunch of faces from this. Basically, just again to give you a demonstration of how this works. So now we've got a gap in this original object. I'm going to go down to the volume effects here, choose this techno space one, apply to selected. Then we're going to have to do a bit of modification because the scale is going to be different for every object. So I open up the geometry nodes. We can scale the normal offset like this, modify the random scales. 
using a range, maybe jump into the cycles mode. Let's modify this scale a bit more and then maybe increase the density. Density up to 100. Okay, let's, let's change the normal offset again to get a bit closer to the surface without clipping. Maybe I'll change the outside material for this as well to make it a bit brighter. Okay, so this is the intention for how the effect should be used. So to have them provide an interesting surface underneath another surface. And if we click on the actual objects, you'll see that they have an AO material, just like most of the objects in Baijin. But they've kind of been calibrated to add shadowing underneath another surface. So you can see that for this object, the brown is more present around the corners of where we're looking through the object. But here's the thing, using the volume effects in this way is one way of doing it, but they're also useful just on their own for building up hyper-density complex surfaces. So let me demonstrate this. All right, so here I've got another scene. I was just working on like a gut system so that's a little bit of a spoiler let's uh get rid of that let's show our other character so this guy here he's got a kind of synthetic mesh effect applied to him let me modify values let's go up to 3000 for you let's uh do 0.1 for the scale so this is another one of the volume effects but this time actually let me add a bit of rotation as well so radians 3.14 multiplied by two and the negative as well no, 3.14 Sorry, excuse my mumbling. So even though there's no surface above this volume effect, I'm still using the effect to create an interesting mesh surface. This one hasn't been added to the presets yet, but it will be for version 9. Basically, this object is hollow for all intents and purposes. Hollow comprised of mesh content, which is supposed to give the illusion of a volume. But using it creatively, you can get all sorts of interesting generative effects. So you can play with the rotation of these and the scale and their distribution. Like I said, we even have normal offsets for this as well. So if you want to make him like really weird, skinny or bloated or whatever, then you have control over that. Maybe I'll increase the maximum potential size for the objects to get all kinds of weird surfaces going here. So I think people are going to have a lot of fun with this because already with the presets I'm making, I'm already coming up with like all kinds of really weird like mental images for artworks I can make. Let's try swapping this out for the cross mesh one as well. There we go. So this is another one of the presets, which is supposed to look more like a kind of synthetic or metallic lattice cross mesh thing. So we can see that here making up the object. And because I've got the random rotation going, if I restrict this, they'll be much more in line with each other. There we go. So it's much more like a proper mesh. So I think it's going to be really cool. Can't wait to see what people make using that. So at the moment, I'm just adding more of these presets to the volume effects thumbnail window here. And then from here, working up to the version 9 release on the 10th of December, I'm basically just going to be working on presets, testing, setting up the web page and stuff like that. Now, some things about the plan have changed since the original video. I originally said that I was going to release Biogen with a free and a paid version. The free version is still going to be here, but I'm not doing a paid complete version, at least not yet. Instead, for now, I'm just going to opt for a system where the free version will be available and I'll do paid content packs individually so people can pick and choose them as they like. Maybe at some point I'll do a bundle with like all the content packs together, but that'll be further down the line. Also, when Biogen version 9 is released, there won't be any paid content packs available to start with. And the reason for that is because I'm quite strapped for time. I'm supposed to be going to America in like a week, provided that, you know, the whole global situation doesn't prevent that from happening. So like I'm really trying to sprint to get this done and out there. So I won't have time to make any paid content packs for it yet, but I still want to get the free version into your hands. So that's why I'm basically just focusing primarily on getting that done and out there now. So when it's all up and running, you'll be able to go to the webpage curtishold.online forward slash by Jin. There's no point going there now if you're watching this before it's out because you'll find nothing there. Wink, wink. But like I said, if you want to stay updated, then Twitter is probably the best place you can do that. But otherwise, I think that's about it. Uh, I haven't shown you the uh, structural demonstrations. Let me take a look at that. Okay, wire test. Here we go. I don't want to use Eevee because it messes with the recordings. But anyway, with the help of Arendelle, I've been playing with doing wires, different kinds of wire systems and wire bundles and duplicating objects at different points of the wires and stuff like that. So there's been work in regards for like doing structural effects like this. I think this one will be quite useful for like sci-fi scenes. If you have grating going over a floor and you just want like a bundle of cables going underneath, you should be able to do that with like one click using this. But again, this is not for version 9. This will probably be for like version 10. But just letting you know that I've been working on it. Okay, so yes, I think that's where we'll leave it for now. My throat's getting a bit sore because I'm recording things in bulk at the moment. I'm a very, very busy boy. Okay, so subscribe, notification, bell, social media, Discord, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time.